So, maybe you've read a lot of stuff, maybe you've heard a lot of stuff about what hormones are and what they do. So we're going to go over misconceptions. Ooh, spooky. Um, they're not that scary, I promise. So, hopefully I can help clear some stuff up and show the transition's not that scary when you think about it. But it can be. Because it's like a sense of unknownness, right? Like, what's this scary HRT? What's it like? What does it do? It's a box. It's it's just a box. It's just it's just a box with stuff in it that maybe you take as a pill. Maybe you take it as um gel or even a needle, right? <laughs> And if there's a certain option that you don't like, you can just say, Hey doctor, I don't like that option. Can I have a different one? Yeah. And then you get it. So I use pills. Um, literally all it is is some pills. I drink some water and I gulp it down and that's it. Life goes on. Imagine you just swallowed a pill right now. Yep. Uh, now you wait, you know? Life goes on. <laughs> Life uh, just keeps going, you know? It's not some scary thing that like changes your brain and makes you a completely different person. That'd be kind of ridiculous, right? Instead, it just alters your hormone levels. All that means is which is the dominant hormone in your body. <laughs> and if you don't like the effects of HRT, you can just go, hey, now nah, I'll stop. And then you go back. That's really it. <laughs> um, just remember, um, doing HRT and not doing HRT is, is just as much of a choice in a sense. Now, yeah, the stuff out of our control, obviously, but the one you ultimately choose is still a decision in a sense. Um, and even if you transition much later, you can still do it, right? <laughs> Again, it's just a box of pills that you can just go get. Easier said than done to get it, but once you have it, you have it, you know? <laughs> so I guess the misconception is that it can be a bit anticlimactic once you get the box, but the thing that I really tell you in other videos is that at the end of the day, it's just a box. <laughs> it will slowly change your body, sure, and affect the brain in some ways, but ultimately, this goes to the next point, you're still you. <laughs> that won't change. You won't suddenly um, become a different person or become a stereotypical cheerleader girl that has a jock boyfriend by the car and is going to drive you to the game or whatever. Though maybe some people would like that, but however, um, it doesn't change who you are. All it can do is really... <laughs> change how you experience emotions and also kind of how you look kind of it <laughs> right um it's still up to you to be you right if you like doing certain things guess what you're gonna still be doing those things <laughs> um it's not like you are suddenly cannot do those things oh no you've lost the ability to do things no doesn't matter what you do. If you like video games, you can still play video games. If you like weightlifting, you can still lift weights. You can do whatever, right? <laughs> you don't have to sacrifice feminine... Oh wait, you don't have to sacrifice masculine hobbies just because you're now living as a girl. Right? That'd be a bit absurd. <laughs> um, you can just do what you always do, just as a girl. Um, or a boy or MB if um, other people are watching. Um, I don't know how to frame the video because like about my experience but maybe uh, trans guys and non-binary people can relate in some ways. You know? <laughs> if there's like a big difference I'll try to clarify. Um, so as you obviously know, um, well obviously that's a bit condescending huh? Um, but uh, testosterone for trans guys can alter the voice. And for trans girls, it does not. Like, I learned how to change my voice, but it doesn't mean I'm not salty about it. <laughs> However, um, there's some areas that trans femmes get some extra perks, you know, not having to do top surgery, for example. Well, you can, it's just you don't 
feel is needed to, per se. Not that anyone has to, in any sense, but you know what I mean. Um, but the thing that really surprised me was how, like, the body, it's just a little different. Life goes on, right? I said that. But the way you experience some things kind of differ in a way. And I find that super interesting. What I mean by that is that, sure, everything's the same externally, but internally some things are a little different. For example, if you happen to eat a lot of food, you might notice you won't be able to eat as much food if you're taking estrogen. Opposite for um, people taking testosterone, you may notice an unsatiable hunger that can't be stopped. Um, but with trans girls, uh, you might notice slightly less food you can eat. Um, please don't try to push your new limits. Uh, you will throw up. <laughs> I found that out the hard way. Because um, I'm like, oh, I normally eat this much. I'm fine. And then I vomited. Embarrassing. <laughs> you don't want to be that person. Don't, don't do that. Your body will have new limits. They'll be different. And not every person experiences it to the same extent. So I can't be like, oh, I can't eat as much food, this exact amount of food. You know, that'd be a bit absurd for me to claim I could predict that for you. <laughs> it's just going to be different. Um, in what way? I don't know. Some foods you might like more, some foods you might like less. For example, I'm recording this during Easter and uh, ever since HRT, chocolate has become a bit of an addiction to say the least. Um, like sure, I liked chocolate before I got HRT. But I didn't like it this much. Like, I feel like it became an obsession. <laughs> um, and it shocked me <laughs> to find this out, I guess. Um, so, depends on the hormone you're taking. It may affect certain foods. I know when <laughs> some trans people take a spirolactone, which is a type of testosterone blocker, I've been informed that that can make you uh, really like pickles, I believe. <laughs> um, I think it's because of the saltiness or something. I'm... I take cyproterone, which is a different one. <laughs> you don't have to really know the difference, it's okay. Um, but they do the same thing. Um, but because I take cyproterone, um, I don't crave pickles. However, if you crave pickles, that's okay. <laughs> um, another way is temperature. <laughs> now, you might not know this, because I didn't. Uh, testosterone as a dominant hormone is really good at regulating like heat in your body. So you can kind of handle the cold a bit better if you have a lot of testosterone. So um, trans guys, um, you're going to have a much better time at ski trips, probably. Because <laughs> you'll handle the cold a little better than your trans femme friends. <laughs> um, so for the trans girls, usually when it gets really cold, <laughs> it feels a lot colder than it used to be. <laughs> um, now, I don't know if it's my imagination, but I feel like I experience heat a bit more but maybe that's because i don't constantly walk around in a hoodie so i have lost that adaption um so um boy motors beware i guess but <laughs> um depends what you're used to i think um so temperature will be different particularly in the water this is something no one told me right so obviously in our lower regions that i can't mention on youtube for obvious reasons um a lot of blood is circulating um, so that part of the body can get very sensitive if you have dominantly testosterone. So when you dip into the water to go for a swim, that part will be particularly difficult. However, if you're on E, that part of your body won't radiate as much heat, obviously. So when you go into the water, and this surprised me, um, dipping to that part of your body isn't as much of an issue. Like, my whole body feels like a lot colder in general when I go in the water. But um, that part of dipping into the water isn't as intense. That said though, these, they're very sensitive now. <laughs> Estrogen makes your breasts very sensitive. So when you get to that part of the water, it's really cold. <laughs> no one told me this. Because <laughs> you have a lot, you know, the body's doing its thing. It's a very sensitive part of the body. No one told me this. Why didn't no one tell me this? I watched a million of these videos of like, oh, things you should know if you start HRT, and no one mentioned this. I feel 
ripped off, I have to say. So, how the body will respond will be different. This can also be emotionally, right? <laughs> so emotionally, it's kind of different. How do I explain this? You still feel the same way, but the way your body expresses it is different. So I guess the brain's the same, it's just how it responds to that information, more or less. Have you ever like <laughs> cried and then felt like you couldn't <laughs> cry enough? Like you, it was almost blocked out. <clears throat> that is something that you can experience with a lot of testosterone in your body. So um, trans guys, I'm sorry, it's gonna be really rough. Um, <laughs> you're gonna have a bit of a tough time crying. For It's gonna really throw you off, but it'll be okay. For trans femmes, uh, prepare to cry. <laughs> Um, chances are you have a lot of built-up emotion that you haven't been able to handle yet or deal with in a healthy way. But don't worry, crying isn't a bad thing. It's just your body, like, releasing fancy hormone stuff to make yourself feel better. That's why you cry. Well, that's the abridged version, at least. Um, but ultimately, it doesn't change who you are. It's just how you experience it. I found myself crying way more, but... I was happier it's just it took less to make me cry but it made it easier for me personally to like resolve the issue because you know I just felt that overall it was less of an issue because <laughs> um, I could helpfully confront the feeling and I knew that I felt bad and people around me knew I was feeling upset which can help um, so you might feel angry less often um, unless you open Twitter or play League of Legends you're probably still gonna be very angry I, I apologize but generally that aggression's a bit harder to reach in comparison you'll still feel it so don't feel dysphoric if like you still feel angry sometimes or even a lot it's fine it just depends um, same goes for trans guys if you're still crying a bunch that's fine right <laughs> everyone's different and you should regulate your emotions however feels best for you. Make sense? Cool. Um, as far as um, bodies feeling different. Um, oh, here's a big one. So I'm going to explain this in a way that YouTube will hopefully not hate. <laughs> I'm going to have to risk the ad revenue for this one. So, we're still experiencing puberty, and in puberty, you start to feel things. Intimate things, you know? And the way that you're going to experience that will be different. How exactly? It depends. So, um, essentially, and I can mostly speak for trans femmes, obviously, <clears throat> when you feel interested, let's say that, Okay, cool. When you feel interested um, in something, someone, that kind of thing, you'll kind of feel butterflies across your chest. Not everyone experiences this, but some people do. It'll feel like uh, everything's like swirling around at the stomach. Um, it's actually a really nice feeling. I much prefer it than um, something extending, to say the least. I think I'm. I think I'm keeping this ad friendly. <laughs> um, so the way you express that is different. You'll also experience um, lowered sex drives um, or higher for trans guys. <laughs> um, and it will kind of balance itself out later on. Remember, this is puberty. Remember the first time, <laughs> you know. Um, and if anyone watching hasn't, experienced uh, puberty in general yet um, it'll be a, probably a evil way whether you've experienced it or not it'll be a very different experience it'll be a little confronting even because your body's suddenly responding in a way you're not used to but it can feel kind of euphoric too because it's like the way you felt like it should have been so it can feel really euphoric actually even when it inconveniences us <laughs> um so that's the main thing with that. Um, the only other thing I can think of right now is like, I feel like, like 
Um, this is more of a social thing, but it's connected to HRT, so I'll say it here. Um, the way you experience the world can be different because chances are you'll be happier in yourself. And when I would go on like nice walks, I never noticed this before, but I had like these beautiful flowers like laid across this area that I passed almost every day. And I never noticed it until I started HRT. No one told me about this kind of phenomenon. I feel like I'm more present, I'm more aware of the world around me and everything in it. So as a result, I see things and I go, oh, I'm seeing the world, you know? I feel more a part of it in a way. I'm not like a, a spectator to a movie. I'm inside it, you know? Um, the world, not the flowers. <laughs> Um, so you'll kind of experience um, things you might not have noticed before. It'll be very obscure stuff, like just simply noticing flowers or noticing that the sun looks really nice or all sorts of things like that. <laughs> now that's a very vague one. I don't know if that applies to just me or other people because uh, I've never was told this before transition. So is this a part of everyone's transition? If anyone watching, uh, finds this out let me know I'm curious okay another thing of HRT that can really throw you off you might have heard this before the blanket statement HRT will change your sexuality that's not really true <laughs> kind of is let me explain so HRT can't literally change your sexuality nothing really can right Sexuality is just a way we describe attraction and how we feel on the inside, right? Um, whether that be romantic or stuff I can't say in a YouTube video. <laughs> um, so, the thing is, when you transition, and this can be socially and hormonally, or both at the same time, depends what you do first, you will experience different gender roles put upon you and different expectations suddenly like for example if you're a trans girl suddenly it's not socially taboo as much to date men and for trans guys suddenly it's not as socially taboo to date women so if you happen to have been closeted about feelings of liking the other binary gender than the one you're transitioning to suddenly it's a lot easier to come out <laughs> Because suddenly, it's not as taboo anymore. <laughs> um, so, those walls will kind of break. As an opposite effect, it can actually make figuring out that you're gay a bit harder. Because suddenly, what used to be considered straight by society is now gay. Or lesbian. Or other words to describe that experience. And that can be very different for people, right? So, remember you can be attracted to any gender, it doesn't matter, right? You can be attracted to multiple, you can be attracted to none. However, as you transition and experience the gender role a bit, um, which we can't really escape that, we can defy the gender roles in a sense, but we're participating in gender in a way. Because socially we exist in a world of gender, right? The way we're treated, the way we're seen, that can be affected by gender. So uh, you'll suddenly see um, some things are more socially acceptable to others and some are not. That doesn't mean you can't do any of these things, but it just means some things will be easier to understand. Another thing, if you're transitioning, chances are you'll be interacting with a lot of other trans people. It depends on the person. Some people don't. Some people stealth and don't interact with any. That's fair. That's valid. Do what you want. Um, but if you are interacting with a lot of trans people, you're interacting to some extent with the queer community and um if you're exposed a lot to a queer community chances are you have closeted queer feelings it will come out <laughs> you'll figure it out right it's not necessarily because you transitioned it's because of the social changes in your life due to your transition right again uh, little pills can't change your sexuality <laughs> otherwise conservatives would be using those for weird conversion therapy nonsense right can't change sexuality just how it is <laughs> the sexuality you end up being in a sense you likely already are 
I know there's like discussion of it being more fluid. That could be true too. There's a lot we don't know. But what we do know is that the hormones themselves won't change your sexuality. And you may discover things you didn't know. Maybe you're bi, maybe you like the same gender, maybe you like another gender. Maybe you're ace, maybe all sorts of things, right? You figure it out. <laughs> and when you do, it will feel a lot clearer because you're understanding sexuality in the context of a gender you feel better as, you know? I know like, for example, some trans guys can feel odd about liking women when it was deemed a lesbian thing, but once they were socially viewed as a man, suddenly the social context of their sexuality, a straight trans man or a bi trans man, um, makes more sense to them in regards to their presentation. Same with trans girls. Maybe being a straight man didn't feel right, but being a lesbian trans girl felt right for them, you know? Um, whatever sexuality you feel, you are valid, by the way. I know it can feel like that's not the case. Because people like, like, saying their views or whatever. Just like whoever you like. It's not too complicated. You don't even need a label if you don't want to. You'll figure it out, I believe. Um, so, the last thing about HRT that no one tells you. It's still puberty. No matter what age you do it, there's a fly attack for me. Australia moment. Um, so it's still puberty, right? No matter what age you transition, you're experiencing puberty. Puberty is a big undertaking. Lots of changes and it can be confusing. So uh, if you can, be sure to make sure you have someone to talk to about all this stuff realistically it's a lot of stuff and a video can't cover all of it that'd be absurd for me to claim as such right there's a lot i don't know there's a lot you don't know and that's okay if you have someone to talk to you can work through anything that you are surprised by but remember you got to give yourself some grace it's still puberty like society for cis people is built around giving people a lot of grace to figure stuff out through puberty um like it goes through high school for them it might not for you maybe it does go for you in a way um depends when you transition right for example i figured it out very young but i transitioned in my early 20s so I had to figure out puberty during university instead of high school. And university, there's less of an expectation of people are going through puberty, right? High school has more of a, everyone's really pubescent and just trying to figure it out. <laughs> Whereas university, everyone's kind of past that. And chances are, whatever stage of life you're at, you'll kind of feel behind. I know me saying that comes from a place of privilege um, to be as young as I am. I understand that however i think this advice still applies to everyone you may feel a bit behind maybe very behind socially in regards to your transition compared to women around you men around you non-binary people around you all sorts of things right that can be trouble that can be tricky right um you think oh why aren't i succeeding in the way that cis people around me are that's because I had puberty earlier give yourself grace give yourself time and it's frustrating really frustrating the impatience can be off the wall even but all you can change is the future and the present right um i'm not gonna act like i don't have a bad habit of imagining idealized high school scenarios right dramatically come out as a girl and like um somehow like um at the school formal like if some random exchange student guy like appears um transfer student comes on in and then somehow i get fancy boyfriend and dance through the school dance as a girl that kind of thing can persist in the mind right now that's vulnerability by the way that's a little secret okay okay cool um it can be easy to imagine scenarios we can never have however we can also even imagine scenarios that we can have someday. 
sure, maybe we can't be a schoolgirl in high school, right? But we can be we can do university as a girl, we can learn anything as a girl really. You can just do classes in random stuff that you find fun. Cooking classes, dancing classes, ice skating. There's other ways to get that communal school experience as your chosen gender, you know? Um that's just how it works, you know? Um, whatever stage of life you're at, it's still puberty. You're gonna make some little fumbles. You're gonna make some mistakes and you're gonna do some things where you feel a little silly for doing it. <laughs> and that's cause you're figuring it out, right? Just remember the trans girls, no matter what age you are, you're experiencing the emotions of a teenage girl and for the trans guys, you're experiencing the emotions of a teenage boy, okay? <laughs> Understand that in the context of whatever age you are living as, okay? <laughs> so yes, it doesn't literally make you a teenager, but understand you have the hormones of a teenager. <laughs> and after a few years, it balances out and you'll be all good. But it can be a little rough at first. However, I think you can do it. Um, if you want more videos like this, you should let me know in the comment section below. Um, we're very new to doing the face cam stuff, eh? that's fun. I made this video spontaneously because I was practicing my hair and I thought I looked cute. Um, is, that is that vain? Is that a state of vanity? Maybe. <laughs> but um, I had a lot of fun with this one. I watched videos like this like all the time. <laughs> Early on, I watched count countless videos about the things they don't tell you about HRT, so I was actually really excited to make this. <laughs> Feels like I, I get to be part of someone's journey, and that's cool. Um, so, if you enjoy this, uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Wow! <laughs> that's the things they say. Um, I make uh, trans voice f tutorials for trans girls. Um, I make uh, ASMR stuff um, and uh, trans videos like this. All things trans is what the channel's whole deal is. <laughs> um, this is one of the earlier videos I've made that's like more generalized, like for trans people in general. So if you want more stuff like that, let me know. I know like um, majority of the audience is trans women, so trans guys and non-binary viewers, don't be afraid to let me know that you want to see more of stuff that's also catered to you. With all that well and said, I will depart and go eat Easter eggs excessively. I may have a problem. <laughs> stay hydrated and know that you are valid. Oh, maybe I should have like stay hydrated and know you're valid and like did it that way. That'd be much better. <laughs>